okay so uh, am i audible uh, I, okay so good morning to all of you i could see 30 participants this join yeah so last three classes onwards we are discussing about matlab right so anyone has anything to ask so in this class i have only focused to clear your doubts if you have any doubts in the matlab that will be cleared in this class okay yeah so if anyone has anything to ask regarding the matlab we have performed i think three experiments last three classes we discussed three civil engineering experiments based on matlab so uh, how many of you understood anyone has any confusion in that how many of you practice actually because you have to practice a lot right because these are the programming skills once you practice then only you will get uh, more understanding everything will be more clear to you yeah so anyone has anything to ask before we continue our class please uh, someone can say anything right aditi i could say aditi is there sravanti is there ashish is there yes sir yes so how uh, so did you understood these ex last three experiments matlab based experiments yes sir uh, did you practiced uh, you you mean the assignment uh, for uh, no 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 not assignment like experiments we performed right these seven uh, seven eight nine three experiments we performed that is based on matlab so these three experiments did you perform in matlab uh, not yet sir okay so did you understood from the video yes sir theoretically but uh, i do need to practice and then i can be sure that i understood them yeah that's why do it first right because almost one month over we started matlab based experiments okay so do it first uh, i have not taken i think only one quiz i have taken that too i think some mistakes are there that i'll correct it anyway and uh, first i thought we'll be completing our syllabus quickly and then we'll do the evaluations gradually okay so for maybe we are just completing our syllabus so total i think seven experiments we completed till now so three more are left one is matlab based and two are based on surveying so total three experiments are left so that will complete it by next week, most probably one day or next two weeks will be completing. And then last three weeks, I'll be only focusing on assessment. Okay. So if you have any doubts, doubt clearing will be there or any assessment and uh, then assignments and assignment means nothing but the reports and all. that I'll be doing in last three weeks. So before that, I want to complete all the 10 experiments, civil engineering experiments. Okay. So that you have some time to prepare yourself for the final exam and all. You can practice as much as possible. Yeah. So anyone uh, performed these ex these MATLAB scripts in your local system? How many of you installed MATLAB, or are you using the virtual machine, which I uh, one video I demonstrated, right? How many of you able to access MATLAB? Yes, Aditi, Teja. I could see only few names are there, so that's why I can call only to them. Others are roll numbers. Harish, Shushmita, please unmute someone and respond. BJ is there. So this is online class, right? So someone should respond. You, everyone should respond. Otherwise, I will feel boring, right? Only I am speaking. No one is uh, speaking and all. Someone, please. Sam Kiran, how many of you have access to the MATLAB? I mean, if you installed in your system or I have access to MATLAB. Okay, so uh, yeah, so do you installed in your local system, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so did you perform experiments, whatever we discussed in the class? I did a, a little practice and not all experiments. Okay, okay. So did you find any difficulty in that? No, sir. It was quite simple compared to C or Java. Yes, yes, correct. So that's why actually uh, MATLAB is very much user friendly. Okay, so once mm -hmm. you see, because all the functions are already inbuilt, no need to write the code from basics. That's what yes, I'm discussing yeah. from day one, like integration, differentiation, all these things you did, right? In the C, C++, Java. So there, all the codes, you have to write it from the basics. But in MATLAB, no need to write integration and all, because see, integration methodology won't change, right? 
so if uh, though these functions are already available in the matlab so it is very simple uh, very easy to use that's why in modern uh, engineering engineers everyone uses matlab uh, because you know the functions are available so very quickly you can write your programs you can uh, you know do the simulations and all again the c and c++ these are obviously very basic programming language uh, from that only this matlab has evolved okay if you see the matlab source code that is written in c c++ java okay so once that's it once will already discovered so for you no need to discover the will will is already discovered by someone earlier so why to waste time in discovering again the same will just use the will and make your car is not it so that's why matlab is very much you know powerful tool to do all this computation and all so that's what we are doing in this course and we chosen matlab because i think c c++ basic code also you, you should understand that already you studied in the first year course so now you will be more you know into the real life problems you will be solving more real life problems like in we have selected three experiment in civil similarly four experiment similarly in other discipline also mechanical and you know ec and electrical there also four experiments will be there based on matlab these are real life examples real life experiments you will be performing like here if you see our experiment 7 we discussed already we covered this and this video is already uploaded in the lms also so this experiment 7 what we discussed we discussed a competition of stress on a body so this is very much real life problem so uh, as a civil engineer or as even as a mechanical engineer or aerospace engineer okay those who are designing the aircraft or for mechanical those who design the you no know, automobiles cars and all for civil engineer those who design the structures and all you have to find it out the stresses stresses on a structure very real life problems okay it is not like you know simple problem i like find the odd numbers find the even numbers okay these are the basic things what you studied in the first year but now you are into second year almost second year also you are completing so you are now into full fledged engineering discipline so where you are solving the real life problems is not it so that's why our experiments are also based on real life problems not like basic experiments what you performed in the first year like you know so competition of stresses are very much important why because when you design a structure or when you design a car uh, when you design a aircraft these are subjected to loads loads may be if you are designing a aircraft it will be subjected to you know wind load and all so whenever loads are applied on a structure the structure the stresses will be generated right you studied all these things in the engineering mechanics i think uh, that uh, engineering measurement techniques or something you have right no no uh, strength of material all these things first year you have the course so whenever you have whenever the loads are applied on a structure either it may be building bridge or car aircraft anywhere even those who are from ec they also construct this you know iot based you know robots and all so robot is made up of what obviously it is driven by ec circuits ic ic circuits and all but the robot is made up of steel or maybe wooden st structure or maybe some lightweight material right so that when you design that uh, structure of the robot you have to understand the stresses because the load has to be taken care by the structures right so whenever loads are acting on a structure the stresses will be generated stresses is nothing but load by cross sectional area right you studied in your 12th standard or 9th standard also so stress is nothing but load by cross sectional area okay so whenever loads are applied on a structure the stresses will be generated right so if more stress means what if a structure having more stress means you have to make the structure more strong means uh, you want to construct a building and the stresses are very high that means you have to use very thick you know concrete if you use very thin concrete then it will be it will break once the stress when the loads are applied so that's why based on the stresses basically we design our structures okay so that's why this is a very real life problem that we taken competition of stresses on a body using matlab so we discussed all these things basic concepts i i, I have not gone into very in depth analysis but analysis formula we have derived and that formula is actually formulated in the uh, matlab okay all these things we discussed in the lecture number 7 so, and we performed the matlab experiment also right and the stresses uh, we have written this this three script so anyone has any doubt in this three script so simple function we have written okay so what is stress very simple right load by cross sectional area is stress so that's why it's only one line code basically so in matlab uh, this 
परसेंटेज सिंपल मींस बेसिकली दिस इज अ कमेंटेड लाइन जस्ट लाइक योर सी प्रोग्रामिंग आल्सो यू यूज स्टार राइट स्टार एज अ कमेंटेड लाइन मींस देयर द कोड वोंट इवैल्यूएट दिस लाइंस सो इन इन हियर आल्सो दिस आर सिंपल आई मीन इफ यू गिव अ परसेंटेज सिंपल दिस इज कमेंटेड लाइन एंड दिस इज वन लाइन कोड स्ट्रेस कंपिटिशन स्ट्रेस इज व्हाट नथिंग बट लोड बाय क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया ओवर स्ट्रेस कंपिटिशन इज ओवर so load by cross section area means rectangular b into width that will give you the cross section area right and then how to write the function that also we discussed the so same program if you use repeatedly many times then it is easy to write a function similar thing you did it in the uh, uh, that c programming also right uh, that you have you have written the function so and this is another program uh, for loop we have if you want to compute you know in a repeated manner so for example uh, here uh, this programming was what uh, this problem was uh, this is the rectangular block i'll quickly repeat all these things because already we discussed in depth and in our class during the class hour i discussed still anyone has anything to ask please ask me so this class i i have kept only for doubt clearing it is not like same thing i'll repeat entire thing so if you want if anyone has any doubts please ask okay so this is a problem we solved it right so this is a simple rectangular block and the loads are applied so it is a p load is applied it is a tension load right in two directions we are applying the load p and you are asked to find it out the stresses on a plane stresses on an inclined plane that is the question okay so this is a inclined plane we call, we did it fg fg which is at an angle of theta from the Uh, vertical so our question is find it out the stresses on each plane so maybe at the beginning at the first instant the our plane is exactly vertical then what is the stress on a plane so very easy to calculate that is force by cross sectional area will give you the stress is not it so force by cross sectional area so when the section is at this you know vertical f ef condition then what is the stress that is our first value Now second is now our plane has tilted little bit, maybe at an angle of one degree from the vertical. Then what is the stress then? So using this formula, that is normal stress and shear stress. There are two types of stress we discussed in details. So normal stress is which one? Which one is acting the perpendicular to the axis, perpendicular to the section? So our section is here, right? This EF is the section. So which stress acting on a perpendicular direction along the load here? perpendicular to the axis that stress we call it normal stress and which one is shear stress or the tangential stress the stress acting along the surface along the plane like you know so if this is a plane so stress perpendicular to the plane means this is a plane perpendicular means this direction right so if uh, that direction we call it normal stress how much is normal stress means perpendicular to the section and you know along the section means like that so this stress we call it shearing stress shearing stress we compute is that tangential stress and this is the formula so we already derived this that is sigma so normal stress is nothing but sigma cos square theta and the shear stress is sigma by 2 sin 2 theta what is sigma sigma is the normal stress means p by a p by a when the section is just at the vertical that we call it sigma so p by a Into cos square theta will give you the normal stress, and uh, you know uh, sigma by two means p by two a into sigma two theta will give you the shear stress. So there is there is very simple formula we derived, and then we have written this formula into uh, the in the code, okay, in the MATLAB code. So so this is basically if if you want to run, uh, we want to find it out uh, if uh, the st the section is rotating. means at the first instant when the theta value is zero means this section is nothing but single vertical section then what is the stress now in the next instant that is one value first value you got it now in the second instant theta value is for example 1 degree then what is the stress here in the in this fg plane now next in the third instant theta value is 2 degree then how is the fg so how how the stress is changing if the section is rotating from 0 to 360 degree so that we are finding out in the using the matlab script very simple script we have written here right so our degree so now how many times we have to run our program we have to run our program in 360 times because uh, the entire degree is varying from 0 to 
to 1 to 360. Basically, using this command, basically, we are creating a array. Array means a single line vector. So if you execute, so what is this meaning? This colon means, you know, first value will be zero. So basically, what is the meaning of this line? This line meaning is degree is a variable we are creating. We are creating a new variable, which the name is degree. And start value of the variable is zero. And the last value of the variable is 360. And increment of variable is one. Means first value will be zero. Last value of this vector will be 360 and intermediate values will be increased in incremented by one. Means second, first value is zero, second value is one, third value is two, fourth value is three, fifth value is four, like that the loop will continue. So if you execute this line, what you will get it. So simply you select it and evaluate section. So only first line has executed. And if you see in the workspace, the variable you can see. So now just now we executed a simple line. And if you see the variable, what is there? So first, so a degree, a new variable has created. And what is the value inside the degree? So first value is zero. Second value is one, third value is two, three, like that it will continue. So what we have run, first value is zero and last value will be 360, 360 and the increment will be one. So now if you want to increment two, for example, we want first value is zero, last value is 360 and the increment is two means zero, two, four, six, eight, like that we want the values. Then it will be zero to 360 means increment will be uh, you know, every two degree or two value increment will be happening. If you enter it, now if you see the degree, how it has changed, it is now zero, two, four, six, eight. So every increment will be two, two. Okay, so whatever you want, if you want five, then you give five, then it will be zero, five, ten. So increment will be you know, five. So this middle value always you remember this is the increment value. And first value is which which one you want. You want from zero, then you give zero. If you want from one, then you give one, whatever you mean the first value. And this is the last value. Okay. So if you go to last value, what you will see? Last value is 360. And first value is zero. Okay. So again, we'll just replace it to one. So yeah, so now we just created a value. I mean, we have created a variable degree, which first value is zero and the last value is 360. Okay, so now our main, pro what is our main problem? I mean, what is our question here? So our question is to find it out the stresses on an inclined plane. So inclined plane, means this is FG is the inclined plane, which is starting from zero. So when the inclined plane is rotating, from you know vertical to 360 degree, how the stresses are changing. That is our problem here in this problem. So to that to do that, we have to run a loop. Okay, because this entire stress we have to compute for all the 360 values, 360 degree values. So so in our first step, we just created a variable degree and we in we just stored all the 360 values. Okay, next is load. Load means how much load is acting. So this P right here, what is the P? That is some value you have to assign it, right? So this is P, uh, I have assigned it 100. You can assign it in any value, whatever question will be given, that will be there. And then the rectangular black block B and you know, breadth and width. So these two values is required, right? Because this is a rectangular section I considered. So rectangular section means so stress, you have to compute area, right? You, need, you have to find it out. P by A, this is the formula, P by A cos square theta. So you have to find it out P, P already given in the question, which is 100 and A you have to compute. A means cross-sectional area. So for that, you have to find it out the breadth and width of the rectangular area. So if you multiply with you know, breadth and width, you will get the cross-sectional area, isn't it? So that we got it A. So A you have to compute. So for that, you need rectangular width and width width and breadth is given to us, that is five and six, maybe centimeter, inch, whatever may be the, in the whatever may be the uh, unit, okay. Then we have to compute the stress. So now how many stress will we get it? Can anyone tell me? Because we want stress for each instant. So at the first instant, the theta value is zero. So we'll get one stress value. Now in the second instant, theta value is one, one degree we will get another stress value. Then now in the third instant, the theta value is two. 
Okay, so we'll get another stress value. So like that, how many theta values are there? Total 361 theta values are there. So we will get 361 stress value also, right? At each instant, at each theta, we'll get different stresses. Is not it? So that's what we did. We just written a loop because the same stress we have to run for, you know, multiple times, 361 times. So you can write, you know, this, this line 361 times or whether it will be useful. No, right? If you 1000 times or 10,000 times, no need to repeat the same line, you know, same computation repeatedly. So that's why we use loop to run the same command multiple times by changing the input values. So in similar to the C programming, whatever you C++ you studied in the first year, here also we have loop, we have for loop, we have while loop, right? These two are primary loops we, we use in programming. So in MATLAB, so here I have used simple for loop. The syntax is very clear, very simple. For is for loop we are starting. I is the how many times loop will be running, right? That is I. I is an integer value. So what is the starting value of I? I value we are assigning it. It should be running from one to length of degree. So how many times your loop will be running? Your loop will be running total 361 times, right? So at each loop, one, one value it will take and uh, total 361 times our loop should run. So in the code, we cannot write 360. I mean, we can write 361, but if we change the value here, maybe five, increment is five, then the, the, the you know, very degree, then the, the time, the degree will be, you know, 70, will find, 70, 75, something times you have to run the loop. So that's why here we use a function called length. So length is a function, MATLAB, inbuilt MATLAB function. Okay, which will give you what is the length of that variable. So our program should run total 361 times, right? 361 times. So if you use the, the function called length, so length is a MATLAB function. Okay, this is a MATLAB function length. And then if you write the variable name, so it will give you what is the size or what is the length of the variable degree? Okay, so if you give enter, see the answer is 361. Okay, so length is a variable, uh, length is a function which will give you what is, the, what is the size of the variable. So here our variable is degree. So we want to find out total how many, you know, total how many elements are there inside the degree. Then we use simple length function. Okay, so so if you forget or if you want to explore more about length, you just open MATLAB, I mean, open your Google Chrome, type length MATLAB. So it will give you entire documentation of you know, length variable. So just type it. First, we'll be give you length object array. Okay, so MATLAB documentation is very good. Okay, so if you if you have any doubt in anything, just search in Google in the MATLAB website, you search it, you will get all the you know, queries cleared because here documentation is very clear. See, the length is a function in the MATLAB. So with, what is the function? It will give you the length of the object array. So whatever may be the you know, variable length, it will give you the number size basically. So our loop should run up to 361 times. So that's why we use length of degree and i is the i is the initiator right as long as i value is in this range the loop will run so you, if you remember you studied in the first year that c c++ there you have to assign three parameter in the loop first one is the variable initiating point okay very variable initiating point what is the variable starting value and then what is the ending value of, or when the loop will be ending these two condition you have to give it right so here also our for loop for i is equal to one two length of the degree length of the length of degree means 361 right 361 is the value in this example so and then we are computing the stress stress at i so stress is a new variable we are creating and i is the which which index we are computing is equal to stress so we have used a function right stress at inclined plane so if you see, this is the function we have written. So stress at inclined plane, it is simply nothing but area, cross-sectional area. So this is the same formula actually we have written here. Okay, so what is the formula here? 
So stress at the inclined plane, normal stress is nothing but P by A cos square theta, right? So same thing we have written it as a function form. So the stress will be P by cross-sectional area, right? So P is anyway given to us. So stress will be load by inclined area. So inclined area is how much? Area by cos D into degree. So that's what, na? what is the equation here? Okay, so, so it is cos square, right? So it should be square. So just um, make the correction. Uh, inclined area is what? Inclined area is sigma into cos square theta, right? So stresses will be, so inclined area, area by cos D into degree. So the area will be how much? So P uh, A by cos square theta, right? So just make that correction. So it should be cos square theta, P by A into cos square theta. So how to give the square? So square will be just, so this is the cos theta and we want square, right? Square means like that we give in MATLAB. So like that we give in MATLAB is the square. Okay. So this is opening bracket, yeah. So this is the cos theta and this is the square because our formula is what? Formula is uh, P by A cos square theta, right? So I think I just used cos theta, just make that correction, it will be cos square theta. Okay, so yeah, I think one more bracket will be there, yeah. So see how it will give you, see one bracket, I, I just missed it. So it, it, it will give you this small three dot dot, you can see the red, red color line at the bottom, means there is some error. Even if you see in the right side also, this red color means it is an invalid syntax because I have not given one closing bracket. It will give you that error also. See, that's what MATLAB is so user friendly. So even if you do some syntax error, it will give you what syntax error you did. So it is telling what, in, invalid syntax, there might be a closing bracket that I missed it. So here, so just give it. So now there is no error. See the red line has just vanished and it is green, means no error, no warning found, everything is fine. So using this simply, you find we are finding out the stress. Okay, this is a function we have written it. So how to write the function? Simply we write function and then what is the function uh, input? And this is the actual body of the function. And in our programming, we are just calling the function. So function is stress underscore inc. So see the function name is what? Stress underscore inc. And always remember this function also you have to save it. That file name also should be stress underscore inc. Okay. So stress underscore inc is the function. And what is the input it is asking? Input it is asking load. What is the cross-sectional area? And degree. Okay, so degree means what? So at the first instant, means when the loop will start, at, at that time I value is one. So stress one means stress will be a variable in that first element that we are saving, whatever, you know, it, it, it will compute that value it will give you. Similarly, what is the degree value at the first instant? So I value is one, right? At the first loop, I value will be one. So at the degree one, what is the value? So if you open variable degree one is zero, right? So at the first instant, the degree value will be zero and it will store at the stress one. Stress one variable, it will store, right? So now in the next, now in the next loop, I value will be how much? I value will be two. Then it will be, so another variable. So inside the stress, if you see value that's saving. So at the first instant, stress was 3.33. Then in the second instant, second instant means when the degree value is now two also, degree value is, if you go to degree here, so second instant degree value is one, one degree. So in that case, what is the stress? That also it is computed. So the stress value will be 3.3323. Then like that, all total 365, 361 times the stress value will be computed. See at the different angle, different stress values you are getting. Okay, so all stress values are different. Okay. So now, uh, if you run uh, this program, you will get it, the stresses at all the different loops. Okay. And then at the end, we want to plot it, right? How the stresses are varying. 
when the when the uh, uh, when the section is rotating. So that command is plot. Simple, right? If you give plot, it will plot it. The function plot degree. Our x axis is what? X axis is degree, and y axis is stress. X and y. If you give it, and if you run the program, simple run. If you see the plot, so x axis is degree. So our degree is changing from zero to 360 degrees so up to this point. If you see, it is 360 degree up to that point, and how the stresses are changing. So when the loop, when the plane is exactly at the vertical, right? So when the plane is exactly at the vertical, means theta is zero, then what is the stress? Uh, stress value will be this much, 3.33 something. Okay, now when the gradually you are increasing the theta value, if you see the stress value also decreasing. So when after you know certain extent at 180 degree, again you get the maximum stress value. Again, it is decreasing like that. It will be you know simply oscillated form. Because why it is oscillated form? What is our function? Our function is cos function, right? Cos square theta. That's why our plot also, if you see, it is a cos function. At zero, it starts with peak value and then gradually decreasing. So this is nothing but a cos function, right? Because our function also cos here, cos square theta we used. Is not it? That's how we got it, cos. Okay, so it is very simple. Uh, uh, now, you, if you want to label it, means x axis value you want to give it. So it is very easy to write. So if you just give x level, x level, whatever level you want to give, maybe x level is stress or degree. Okay, so this is first bracket, not uh, sorry. Yeah. Give enter now. If you see the plot, x level has king degree. See, so so easy. I mean, how you are creating the plot? So now y level is what? Y level is stress, right? That we want to write it here. So how will you write it? Simple y l a b e l y level. What you want to write it is the stress, right? Stress. Enter. So now if you go to plot, you will see y level is written stress. Whatever you want to write, you just write it out. Okay. So now you want to color it. Maybe now currently it is in blue color, right? You want to make it red color. That also you can do it. Anything, anything, any you know, formatting you can do it in this plot. Now you want to give a title, title of this plot. Title of this plot may be stresses, you know, variation of stress on an inclined plane. Maybe you want to give a title of this plot. How will you give? So here some title it will print. How it will print? So the function here is simply red title. Title give space, maybe a variation of stress on a inclined plane. Okay, so just give a title in in an inverted comma, enter. So now if you go to plot, see the title automatically came. Variation of stress on an inclined plane. Automatically, the title has came. Isn't it? See, so, so easy it is uh, to you know to compute all these parameters. But now, if you want to make it color, or if you want to make it dotted line, anything you can do it. Okay. So that's all. So anyone has anything to ask up to this point? Yes. Anyone? Any doubts? Is it clear? Okay. So now you can export it. You can save this figure into the JPG format or PJ format, whatever maybe, and you can export it figure. So that's what that is our uh, lecture number seven. That is the seventh experiment we did it. Then we performed uh, that bending moment and shear force computation, right? That was lecture number eight and nine. That too we did it in the last two classes. So if anyone has anything to ask, please, please let me know. Okay. So in that we computed the shear force and bending moment diagram, right? Using the MATLAB. So directly I'll open the code, which we have written in the last class. Last class we have written deflection, right? So again, deflection. Uh, so if you type clear, clear means it will clear all the workspace variables. See in the workspace already these many variables are there. Now I want to delete it because I want to start a new program, right? So you should always clear the earlier variables. 
So the command is simple clear, it will clear all the workspace. So now workspace is empty. Now I want to clear the command window. See earlier so many things are there. I want to clear all these things. Then the command is CLC, clear screen, it will clear everything. Okay, so now we, we want to start a new program that is shared force diagram, how to draw the shared force diagram. Okay, so how to do that? So we have, we have used to, like two formulas, right? Two equations. One is if a concentrated load is acting, then what is the how to, how to draw the shared force diagram, ending diagram? And how to, if, if a UDL or uniformly distributed load is acting, then how to draw the shared force and bending moment diagram. Why we are doing all these things? Because we have to design our structure, right? We have to find it out the dimension of beams, columns, slabs, all these things. So for that, you have to find it out the bending moment and shear force that we are doing it here. Okay, using MATLAB. So we just use two formulas, right? I mean, two uh, problems. One is concentrated load, another is UDL. So UDL, uh, okay, let me open here. I mean, UDL first I'll demonstrate. Already I explained, but still, if anyone has any doubts, uh, please ask. So, very simple. Just W means what is the UDL force is value is acting. Then what is the length of the beam? L is another variable. Y is where we want to find it out the bending moment and shear force, right? That's what we did it. And we computed shear force. And then shear force function also same thing. We have written it in terms of function form. Okay. Because function is always useful. You know, when you do same line or same command repeatedly, if you're doing, then function is very much useful. Okay, then shear force diagram, we are computing here. So if anyone has anything to ask, please let me know. Okay, so W length and this Y is means, Y is means here we are drawing or plotting the shear force diagram. Means we are uh, traveling the section where we are from left to right. Means at the first instant, our section, section means where we are finding out the bending moment and shear force, that is just at the support. And then gradually we are moving our section from left to right, right? So our first instant or at the first loop, our section will be just at the support itself. Then in the second loop, we just move the section maybe one meter and find out what is the bending moment and shear force at that section. And then in the third loop, we are moving our section towards you know, right. And again, we are computing what is the shear force and bending moment diagram. So all these things we are doing in a loop manner, and we end and, and the end at the every loop we are recording the what is the shear force and bending moment diagram, bending moment values of that beam. That we are doing it here, right? So our loop, so our section we created. So total UDL is acting 10 newton per mm square or any 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 unit. L is the length of the beam, which is nothing but 20, 20 meter or 20 feet, whatever may the unit. And Y I is the section which we are moving. So yi will be changing, right? At the first instant, yi will be zero. Second instant, yi will be, you know, little further towards right. Third instant will be little toward, further towards the more you know, right. So like that. So yi is a variable or a function we are creating. The first value of yi is zero. Then increment is 0 0.5, or you can give it one, two, whatever you, you wish to do that. So here I have given 0 0.5 and the last value is L, right? L means 20. So up to 20, the section will move from zero to up to the length of the beam that our section will be moving, right? That's what we did it. And then we just simply did on the for loop, whatever I just explained earlier, also same for loop. One, two length of the YI. So length of the YI will be uh, whatever is the YI that will up to that many times our loop will be running. YI will, will be changing at every loop. And then we are using the shear force I mean the shear force function to compute uh, the shear force and then we are plotting it, right? So if you just run it out, you will get shear force and minimum one, both actually I am plotting here. Okay. So how we are plotting? So this blue color line is the shear force diagram. See what we got it here also. So shear force diagram is what? At Z A it is zero, uh, sorry, at A it is here and then gradually it is downwards and here it is maximum, right? Like that inclined line is the shear force line. So that also here we got it, this blue color line is the shear force line, okay? So blue color line is the shear force line. So it is at zero, it is maximum, then inclined gradually going down and again at 20, it is at the negative maximum. And what about bending on diagram? 
So bending one diagram will be simply parabolic in shape, right? This is a parabolic shape bending one diagram. So that here also in our program, uh, what we got it. So here also we got it. This is the bending one diagram in a parabolic shape. Okay. So that's what very easy. So same thing we can write it if you want to give the labeling. So you can write it here, X level, X level is, uh, and X level will be in the, under the quotation you want to write, what is that X level? So X level is nothing but the length of the beam, right? Length. And Y level is, Y level, is nothing but bending moment and shear force, right? So bend shear force slash bending moment. Okay. So now if you execute it, you will X level. See, I just made the mistake in the level spelling. See X level. L A B E L. Okay. X level. Now if you run it again, so now the title has came. This is the length towards length. And this is the shear force and minimum diagram. Two diagrams we plot it in the same uh, plot, same figure. Okay, so that's how we do, we did in the last two class shear forces and minimum diagrams. So anyone has anything to ask? Any confusion in that? If you want to explore more about for loop and all, just go to Google, type it for loop in MATLAB, give enter, you will see the documentation in the MATLAB website. Okay, just click on the first uh, link, you will get it, what is the syntax for that? So syntax for for loop is for index values and what is the statement you want to execute and end. This is a basic simple uh, syntax and they will give you so many examples. So please you know, watch all these examples and do it all. Okay, so even you can uh, run the small, small MATLAB in the MATLAB online also. See here the option is C open in MATLAB online. If you don't have MATLAB or if you are unable to you know, access the our college server, even you can run small, small examples in their web browser also. Just open in MATLAB online. If you click it, uh, uh, that will be executed in the MATLAB online. Okay. So the same example, you can run it in the MATLAB online also. Yeah, so it will take some time to load and once it is loaded in the browser also you can run simple code MATLAB code so anyway if you have any confusion please let me know and even you can search in google also just type the MATLAB and then whatever is their query so it will be answered definitely because in MATLAB um, that documentation is very much powerful so many things are already there in the documentation yeah so anyone has anything to ask uh, regarding the basic functionalities of MATLAB. Yes, please let me know if anyone has anything to ask. No confusion, everything is clear. Okay, if everything is clear, then maybe we just completed our MATLAB three experiments. So one more experiment, I'll do it in the next class. And then two more experiments are left for the that surveying. So total three experiments are left in civil that maybe in the next two weeks we'll be completing uh, our syllabus. Then we'll do our assessment. Means we'll do the quiz every you know, every week. Three three experiments will be taken as assignment. You know, quiz I'll take quiz and we'll complete our uh, syllabus for engineering measurements. Okay, so I'll, I'll request everyone, please practice. Once you practice, then only the things will be clear to you because this programming and all you have to practice more. Definitely we'll get some errors. So even in the MATLAB, that error information is also very in details, debug information it will give you. So from that you can correct the code and you can run it. Okay. Okay, so uh, if uh, no one has anything to ask, then maybe we can close it off the session. So in the next Monday again, uh, we'll meet and we'll try to complete our uh, this MATLAB based one more experiment. There is a calculation of deflections. So up to these three experiments, we drawn the bending moment and shear force diagram. Now in the last experiment, we'll find out deflection on a beam. So once loads are applied on a beam, beam will be subjected to deflection, right? There will be deflection in a beam. So how much will be the deflection? That 
will compute. So once loads are applied on a beam, how much deflection takes place on a beam? That will compute in a MATLAB in the next class. Okay. So in the meantime, I request everyone please watch all the videos, experimental videos I posted in the LMS and practice uh, with uh, in the MATLAB. Uh, okay, fine then. If no one has anything to ask, thank you so much. So next class again, we are meeting. Okay. So I'm closing the session. Thank you.